Every episode of No Offsides Podcast is brought to you by Champion Hockey. Be a champion. crazy <laughs> kids in the background <laughs> oh boy welcome back for another episode of no offsides where we just like to talk roller hockey sponsored by champion hockey i'm dan dean i'm justin wood and today our guest is one of my favorite goalies to watch and someone i was given the opportunity to play with he plays in the north america pro circuit with the blood and feathers nick Whitehawk. how you doing mate? Good. How are y'all doing? Good. Great, man. He, Great to see you. And he's even wearing the BNF hat. Had to. Oh heck Had to yeah. Rip. <laughs> Had to rep, fellas. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot to add the loudest goalie you played with. I may have had that. Did I have that on my old thing here? <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, you are. You absolutely are. But. Like and we talked about this a little bit, and I I love it though, right? Is you are probably the loudest, and as I told you, I tried getting Jimmy T to confirm it, but Jimmy Jimmy wanted none of that. He didn't want you know Jimmy's such a nice guy that he was like, I'm not even gonna say anything that might be, uh, you know, might piss someone off, right? So I was like, you know what, he's I'll Canadian. say it for you. Yeah, he's yeah yeah, <laughs> but I was like, I'll say it. Nikki Whitehawk is the loudest goalie more than he definitely <laughs> is. <laughs> but you you do it in such a like a constructive criticism while while people are playing. Yeah, I mean it's like coaching back there. Yeah, that's all. You know, and I, I just remember. I mean, we played in a. Actually, you know, I got to ask you this before I even get into the story. You still wearing my skates? No, I ah. not. no, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> oh no. I still remember the comeback, man. And you were like, I need skates. And I was like, actually, I don't wear goalie skates, but I have a pair. And then we went and we played, uh, I think it was like in an echo tournament or whatever. And yeah. then next to that, you were like, I'm back. I'm back, baby. <laughs> Best skates I've ever used. <laughs> yeah, it was funny, too, because you're like, I love these in particular skates. I think it was the Tour Code Ones or something like that. Yeah. And I was like, actually, I have a pair. Yeah, it was the most random thing. Yeah, most random, but it worked. worked Absolutely, out, got me back on the ring. You know, it was the you know the the nicest yelling at I've ever received. <laughs> <laughs> what was the reason? Why did you need skates? I didn't he, have any gear. He was in retirement. I I like quit. So when my daughter was born, I took three years off, and I was like, God, I'm not gonna play. So I got rid of all my gear and. I got asked to play. I was like, yeah, sure. Why not? And then I was like, I have no gear at all. I oh, literally wow. pieced, pieced together gear from some random people. That's really cool. <laughs> we ended, how did we do in that tournament? Uh, maybe I think we, second. Yeah, maybe. I think we came in second. Yeah. We lost in the championship, but still we made it there. Yeah, but you know, it came down to, once again, people just not listening. <laughs> just listen to the yelling. That's all. You know, we get into like in between periods and people are just like, could someone just tell him to shut the fuck up? And I just look at him and go, can you just listen to him? <laughs> no. Like, come on. Like, it's not that hard. If he's telling you to do something because you're not doing it and he wants you to do it, he's your goaltender. Fucking do it. Yeah. <laughs> Most of it. I mean, sometimes, you know, when people are just giving the puck away, you just got to tell them, hey, quit sucking. <laughs> And we'll be good. No, I'm just kidding. Listen, some You're people need to, some people just need to kick in the ass. I mean, you can only be nice for so long. Yeah. And well, then, yeah, Dan's famous for the Jersey pep talks with him and his brother. <laughs> yeah, the little north the northeast uh, yelling match. But the best part is, is after the game, I'm like, "Good job, everybody. That was a that was a fun yeah. game." <laughs> They're like, "I hate you." <laughs> Yeah, so you get there and you're like, you know, because I remember it's like you just keep yelling, yelling, and yelling, and then it's just, and then you get in the locker room and you're like, 
All right, well, we could have did better. You know, not not so bad. We'll get him next game. <laughs> They're all like, you just yelled the whole entire game. What do you mean? Like, it's all right. I'm like, ah, it's fine. We played all right. <laughs> did you have a coach that kind of liked to really give it to you when you were younger? Or is it oh, just yeah. your natural personality? No. So when I grew up playing ice, I didn't even start playing roller until later on. But ice hockey, I had a coach from Latvia. And you want to talk about crazy. Where I grew up, we had a rink where you had a microphone on and you could hear throughout the entire rink. And he would wear that during practice. He's And we're, we're 16 years old and he's dropping F-bombs. And he's like, you suck. Start skating. This and that. And we're like 16 scared out of our minds. People are coming into the rink like, you have a mic on. Like, turn it off. And so, like, he would tell me, he'd be like, start yelling at your defense. Tell him, tell him to do something. I'm like, all right. Because I used to no, be that's so quiet. super helpful. Yeah, I used to be so quiet. I would be out there, and I'm, like, not saying a word. They'd be like, am I okay? I'm like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, In your you head, know, you're like, you suck, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you just scored on me, but, yeah, good job. You're, my, you're on my team. <laughs> now i mean how appreciative are you of like you know you you uh the puck is bouncing around right you don't necessarily know exactly where it's at like do you do you like when people are like glove side blocker side like to get kind of get you like to your post or whatever oh yeah especially if i'm sucking that game and you're not seeing the puck very well it's so helpful there's games like as a goalie like you have games where you see everything right yeah, like you're tracking well, everything's hidden. You you see it. Then there's games you're like, I don't know if I've even played goalie before. It's like hitting you, and you don't know where it's at. And your guys are like, it's over your glove, glove. It's in the air. You're like, thank the Lord, <laughs> like someone is uh, saying something. Well, I got I got dragged recently out of uh, goalie retirement. Every now and then I make a comeback. <laughs> um, and so you know, first game, and Justin's on the team as well. And it's just, it's honestly, it's a roster of nine guys and eight of them are defense. So it's, and so like, it's like, yeah, yeah, it could be all night. Yeah. And so like, I'm in there and I'm like, all right, you know, fundamentals, go back to fundamentals angles, right. Make the save, put pucks out of harm's way. And then I first game, I'm like, they're shooting from all crazy different angles. And I'm like, holy shit. I was not ready for this. (laughs) I'm like, just make the save, hit me, dude. Like, hopefully, but yeah, no, I understand. Like, things are just not going your way, and I'm like, yeah. I do not feel like I'm playing well right now. And everyone's like, you're great, you're playing great. I'm like, no, I am not. <laughs> well, that's like recently it, at the the U.S. the U.S. Roller Cup. Yeah, I felt awful. First tournament back, you know, like I haven't skated all summer long. I've just been working, haven't skated. We get out there, new gear. So we practiced oh. the day before, and I was like, I suck. Like, I am fucking terrible. <laughs> I'm used to having roller flies, first off. First year without roller flies. So, like, it felt, I was like, I don't even know what I'm doing, like, out here. Wow. And, I mean, the whole tournament, I felt awful. And then the game winner and the playoffs, I was, like, way, I mean, wasn't expecting it. Um, I think, who was it that... Um, got a pass uh clulo i think yeah got scored but he shot from the worst possible angle he didn't even like look he just caught it and threw it and i like was not expecting it and i like didn't i don't even know if i even went down because like it was just caught me so off guard and i was like yep that that sums up my weekend I mean, you talk about URSRC, so we'll just jump right into there, right? I mean, here's the thing, right? I'm not going to lie. Your team was flying out there. Oh, yeah. Morning, yeah. Right? And so, and that's the crazy thing is, like, that semifinals game where you guys got knocked out, you know, you guys couldn't break the box. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's unfortunate, but it happens. Oh, but, yeah. you know, you guys, I mean- were, you guys were flying – like 95% puck, it might have been 99%, 100% in the first period, puck possession, right? You guys are just flying around in the offensive zone, moving the puck around. They're just sitting in their box. Yeah. But they couldn't put the puck in the net. It's frustrating as 
as playing against the box, it's the most frustrating thing. But I, I will give the tidy whiteys credit because they did an unbelievable job at not cracking. Yeah, you oh, know yeah. what I mean? Because like that's hard to play with guys just moving constantly and like you stay still and don't break. Like that's it's tough. And I mean, yeah, you might playing... you might have had competition with Whitey about who is the loudest that game. Oh, hundred percent. He was yelling the whole <laughs> yelling, time. Dude, he was like a general Whitey. out there. <laughs> yes. And I the best Whitey. part is that he just kept yelling straight at your bench too. Yeah. And oh, see, I've God. known <clears throat> I've known Whitey for a long time. We actually met in California, and then he moved to Tennessee, and then I moved back to Tennessee, and we didn't even realize we moved yet. And so we met playing ice hockey again. And oh, we, were wow. like, well, we didn't even know you moved back, but yeah. So I've been playing with Whitey for a while and I love Whitey, but he cracks me up. He's so funny. He was giving a shit because he played at a tournament with us and he always makes the joke. Like I only got two shifts. He played a little more than two shifts, but he fell, he fell going backwards. <laughs> And so we make the joke that he can't skate backwards. That's why we don't like invite him back. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! But we give him shit. But I mean, no, it was it was a it was good. I mean, it sucked that we lost, but it happens. Yeah. I mean, well, it, it teaches us. You know, you know what uh, Whitey hates though is when you call his name by the wrong name. So if you just be like, hey, yeah, the Whitey tighties, oh. then he just gets real pissed. Yeah, he didn't like that. Yeah, he didn't like that at all. <laughs> I know. His He's... big thing was is we're a bunch of nobodies, and he just kept yelling that after after he beat you guys too. There wasn't. No, there's, they had some players. I don't know. I don't know exactly. It came from the podcast. Yeah, I, I thought so. And uh, we were talking. I forget who we're talking with, and uh, we just started joking around how they're you know a bunch of nobodies, but they're not. I mean, we they're you know you got sour, you got uh, yeah, Curtis. Curtis, yeah. I mean, Whitey. It, I mean, Whitey's a good player. Yeah, I'll, I'll I mean, clear it up. What it was was we were talking to PJ. He was distracted. He was getting Chick Fil A, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> really, and uh, we were reading off the roster, and he was like, "Yeah, I don't know if I recognize any of those guys." And then Whitey didn't like that. Yeah. He didn't, he didn't I, like I, I think I think I might have been like, yeah, you know, a bunch of nobodies or something like that too, just oh, like throwing no. it out there, joking around. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's fine because you know he it, it fueled him up. Hey, to be yeah. honest, we, I mean, blood and feathers. We pride ourselves at the beginning when we first started on being the nobodies. Hey, okay. yeah. I mean, now look at us. I mean, we we have a good squad. We have a Agreed. really good squad. I mean, it sucks how our two Palma has runs have gone but i mean we have good players it's just putting it all together at the end well how long yeah. have you guys been together now it's, this is our third year but the thing is is like we've had guys come and go right that's yeah I'll, I'll give you my honest opinion about roller hockey <laughs> guys will jump ship so easy if someone dangles free stuff and it sucks oh, because yeah. you don't get a lot of quality out of all the pro teams you only get good quality out of four or five teams you know what i mean and it's yeah. it's tough but i mean it's fun when you you put up a fight i enjoy oh, yeah. it yeah yeah i mean like i said i mean you guys put up a fight in usrc that champion team was they're good ultimately a, a stacked roster yeah um you know you get guys from all the other top different teams right uh yeah. jake was like very close to getting uh a pama team down to atlanta as well but it just couldn't pull it together it needed like another week or so but yeah i mean yeah it just seems like you are especially because i like to watch the pro divisions when they're live streamed and uh it seems like and even looking at stats here you just get peppered in every tournament <laughs> that's my favorite I mean, I, I think in tw – so right here, your stats in 2022, right? Your guys' first year in just looking at State Wars, right? 95 saves or shots against, I should say. Not, in one, 95, right? Now, in your second year, it, it went down. You were uh, up to, like, around 50. Heck, yeah. So, you got, I mean, you guys, that just shows, like, yeah, you know, stepped up defensively. 
Oh yeah, no, we have. I also last I only got to play two tournaments last year too, which kind of stunk. Because I mean, work and kids. Put a kids. damper on things. Kids, what is what are they good for? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it puts yes. a damper on things. But that first year was, I'll tell you what, that was, I played almost every game that first year. And then last year I only played two. So, because well, we brought in Joy, who's a really, he's a good goalie too. So we split, split that up. And okay. it sucked that we didn't do as well as we thought we were going to, but hopefully this year. Well, I mean, you're still a young team. Yeah. And relatively, like, I don't know, age-wise, but, like, as in being an organization in the North America Pro Circuit, right? So, you know, going on year three, you look at other teams. I mean, look what Road Runners did. They got pounded for several years. Yeah. And now look at them. They're usually – they usually make playoffs every year and win PAMA with uh, a solid roster, even after losing a bunch of guys to making uh, – to the new – team that that was created for last year's Pama Pro. Yeah. Um, you know, and you just got to look at I me, mean, look at, because I don't know, did, I can't remember, did Skittles come in at the same time as you guys? No, so Skittles has been around for a while. They've been around, I think, for like seven years now. Okay. Because they were, they were around when I first, like, kind of hung them up when my daughter was born. So it's been a little bit, but they weren't, like, playing in Pama if that makes sense. They were in California most of the time. Gotcha. But they've been together since they were like 16 years old. I mean, yeah, those yeah. guys, those kids are good. Yeah, they're a bunch of young, fast Man. kids. And yeah, they, then now, uh, I mean, they, I mean, you, I only look at teams and their stats and everything like that and how they do in the, th in tours, narch, and state wars. Right, yeah. you go, you go, winter wars either side or uh, you know any of the three. You that most teams don't have their full roster. No, so you know you can you can only take that with a grain of salt. But you know looking at a team like that, and you can see the trajectory of them. And so you know, hopefully this year is the year that Blood and Feathers can take the leap. Right. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And stringing, I will uh, stringing oh, a win. No, they say just stringing a win there. You know, that's all it takes. I'm telling you. <laughs> I mean, last year, if we, it's funny that you say that because, like, we all, any team with one win almost made it to the playoffs last year. It ended up being like, if I forget who it was, if they would have lost, a team that only had one win would have made it to the playoffs. But they went into overtime. So it like took out that option. It's crazy. But yeah, that's, that's the thing. Like, you never know at Pama. That's yeah. what makes Pama so awesome. It's, you got 12 of the best teams. And you don't know what's going to happen. That's why it's so important to win. To me, the first game, if you can win the first game, that's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Like the past experiences I've had in Palma, and if you get that first win, that helps a lot. So. Yeah, it really sets the tone for the tournament. Yeah. And I'll say it's been with being with Blood and Feathers, like having La Beta and Epic as our sponsors, like that's been huge as well. Like, they've covered a lot of our costs our free our wheels and things like that like epic is coaches even with our women's pro team i nice. mean they've done a lot for them too i mean it's it's helped <laughs> i'll tell you that yeah i mean and we're actually going to be having the uh, epic guy on and i think it's a few weeks right justin dan yeah 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 he's so awesome we'll, so we're gonna have him on um but i mean also just looking at last year's schedule you guys didn't have an easy schedule last year. No, no not at all. Not Snipers, at all. Golden Knights, Mars Blade, Rage Cats. Yeah. And if you watch most of those games, it was close until the last like five minutes of the game. Like that we were down a goal, two goals maybe in a few of those games where we're down two goals with like five minutes left. And it just kind of wheels fell off. <laughs> but i mean we held in we were hanging in there for a while it's just the moment you stop playing a, your system in pro roller it goes downhill yeah, i mean you had the first year conics skittles uh car shield snipers 
Yeah. So once again, I mean, not the saying there is an easy team to play against, but last year, your last year schedule was you were stacked up against top top, top five, four or five teams. Yeah. You know, and that, we were, that's tough. We were when we were playing uh snipers, it was literally it was three to one, I think, going in like the last six minutes of the game. And we ended up losing like seven to two or something like that. But it was literally like three to one. It was tight until the end. So, I mean, we're, we're there. We're there. It's just, we just got to get over that hump. Yeah. And it's, it'll happen. I feel like this year it'll definitely happen. Just got, I mean, like I said, that your icebreaker is that first win, right? Yeah. So, but I mean, how do you, how are you looking, how are you liking the uh, new Pama Pro playing? It's going to be tough. I'll say that much going if you make it that's going to be tough because you got i don't know how many i didn't i can't remember how many games you'll play and then the next day you're playing the top teams in the world again in in the country so it's like it's it's going to be exhausting but i mean i like it and you're adding uh what national team is that that's uh so i think it's sweet it's not sweden it's is it sweden no i thought it was sweden is it Sweden? I could be wrong. I can't remember, but there's I think there was two or one. Was it France? Yeah. Yes, Maybe France. It was yes, France. France. Sweden was last year. Yeah. And they got smoked. Oh, yeah. Smoked. But France, I'm pretty sure this year. I think it's gonna be awesome. I mean, I like that it's a play in where you have to play good to advance. Mm-hmm. Rather like better than like uh, we'll just take these two teams. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. or these four teams. Like, it's going to be the best player. Best teams make it. Well, it was the the one year was the – they did something similar where they yeah. did the East Coast SummerSlam or whatever it yeah. was. That was our first year yeah. to make Pama. Yeah. And we ended up winning it in overtime to make it. Because <laughs> the top two teams went, and we ended up in playoff – like, in the first playoff game to make it to the championship. We ended up winning it in overtime thankfully <laughs> you know and i mean what's your take because i mean some so it, it's kind of divided excuse me it's kind of divided uh how people feel like they some people feel it should be a smaller field some people think it should be a bigger field i mean what are your thoughts on it on the pro or the pro playing like the pro oh i think it's perfect i think it's good um the only reason why i say that is when you get more teams in it starts to and i'm not trying to sound like anything bad against any teams but it starts to water down right and then it's just like you have games like and again i mean we lost bad last year but i mean you don't want to play teams where it's mercied in the first period yeah and the teams that are in it from last year and the year before and the year before that, they're good enough to mercy anybody. <laughs> yeah. Especially if there's a team that like thinks they should be in there until they play it and see how good they are. I, it's just no competition. Like the top eight teams that made playoffs last year are going to beat any other team. Yeah. You're yeah. not the only one to say that. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much the consistent uh, response from most people. Yeah. I mean, I I think, I think that amount of teams is perfect. Yeah. I mean, and uh, I think me personally, I'm fine with the amount of teams. I think that, I think we talked about this, Justin is like the plat division should be like the top plat should versus the, whether the top two or the bottom, the bottom two pro top two plat go against each other. Have like a play in of like, because there are some good teams in plat. Yeah. And so, well, so, so and that's so, what they can enter. I'm pretty sure they can enter the play in, right? Yeah. I think I so. I mean, they have to, like, of course, Tim, I think, is picking the teams, but you have to actually, like, sign up for to, like, get chosen to be in the play in. Because I think it's eight teams. And then out of those eight teams, the top, what was it, top two teams in each division. I think they're splitting it up into four teams in each. And then the winner of each division makes it or something like that. I'd have to read it again, but 
It says the day before invitation begins, all teams will play three games with top two teams receiving a play in to the pro division. Many teams will play it out in their tier two pro bracket towards their own yeah. championship money price. So those teams are not only trying to get in the pro, like you said. So now they play a round robin three games the day before. Then they got to go in and play a round robin plus playoffs the weekend after. Yeah. <laughs> That's it's, a lot of hockey. It's a lot. I mean, it, but I mean, you can't beat where you're going to be. You're going to be in St. Louis. Yeah. <laughs> you got the Ameristar there, everything. And that's the year that we won it when I was with Rinkrat. That was the craziest probably two weeks I've ever had playing roller hockey. <laughs> so, I mean, are you, you're kind of segueing me to my next talking point, which was Rinkrat, right? And so, uh-huh. I mean, you played for Rinkrat. Uh, you obviously you went into a uh, short hiatus three years because you had a child. Un- yeah. Understandable. I mean, how so? Like, how did getting into pro happen for you? So I moved to California in 2015 or 2016, and one of my buddies that I played ice hockey with, like minors with, he was like, "Hey, I've been playing roller." I can't make it. Do you want to play goalie for me this like one night? I was like, yeah, sure. And um, I go and had a blast and played well. And they were like, do you want to play in a tournament with us? And I was like, yeah, I'll play. So I ended up playing in a tournament like the next weekend and we ended up winning it. It was like a small one at Huntington beach. And they were like, it was rink rat. And they were like, Hey, you want to keep playing with us? I was like, yeah, I will. Okay. That was like Joaquin and Eton when they were like starting rink rat back up. That's how they get you. I'm yeah. telling you. <laughs> yeah. Beat you and, I mean, it was awesome. I had a blast. Hell and yeah, I man. love rink rat. Fabio. He's one of my favorite people. Yeah. Like I talk to him still. And uh, very cool. Yeah. He's awesome. Now as a goalie, right. And you've done enough traveling. How terrible is it to, have to get on a plane and check in your gear oh my gosh first off you get people looking at you like you're stupid or i don't know what they're looking at you like but they're just like what in the world is he carrying and then you get up to the baggage claim and depending on the person if they've done it before or not they're like i don't know what to do with this what how do i check this in is it is it one bag two bag i'm like i've never paid for bags especially southwest i'm like I, I'm not paying for that. They're like, I think it's 50 bucks for that. I'm like, nope, put that with, mm-hmm. my, put that with my bag. It's, it's free every time I've flown, but man, it's sucks. especially when you get done a tournament and your bag is heavy from the sweat and yeah. like you put it on the thing and you're like, please don't be over 50 pounds. <laughs> please don't be over yeah. 50 pounds. <laughs> I've had to fly home last year when I was coaching the women's pro team for blood and feathers I flew back with wheels and jerseys and everything. I'm like, and I flew back with somebody and I literally was like, Hey, can I put some of these jerseys in your bag? <laughs> Cause my bag was like 53 pounds. And they were oh, like, no. can, and so like, I'm like pulling stuff out, trying to lower the weight. I was like, Oh, this oh, is yeah. awful. <laughs> so, Do you like, do you strap your pads to your goalie bag or? No, I, I just wing it and hope they don't lose them. Nice. <laughs> which kind of, which the worst part is, is last year going to Palma, flying from California, they never made, I literally flew home to Tennessee, got, I had three hours to go home, shower, change, and then go back to the airport to fly to Fort Wayne. And I get home oh, to Nashville, my, my bag and my pads are not there. And so I'm on the phone, I'm calling people. They're like, oh yeah, they're, I I had a layover in Dallas. They're like, oh, they're still in Dallas. I said, well, when are they going to be back? And they'll be like, they'll be here tomorrow. I'm like, what time? I I leave in four hours. And they're like, oh no, they're not going to be back in time for that. Thankfully, (laughs) a lady got on the phone and had them shipped to Fort Wayne. Nice. So when I landed in Fort Wayne, they were there like two hours later. I was like, I told, I told, I told Ken, the coach, I was like, I might not be playing. I don't have any gear. <laughs> if it doesn't show up in Fort Wayne, I don't have any gear. He's like, we're going to get you gear. 
<laughs> he's like we're gonna get you gear we'll figure it out they'd slap uh, somebody else's sweaty stuff on you hey i probably would too i've done it oh yeah <laughs> you name it i've done it i've worn i played in a pro tournament in cali and i wore all rental gear <laughs> that's that's one way to do it because <laughs> none of my stuff showed up i was like rental gear here i come <laughs> i look like a bender in there <laughs> That they're makes like, it even more fun to make six saves, though, right? Right, a hundred percent. They're like, "Who the fuck is this guy?" <laughs> he's wearing he's wearing two thousand he's wearing two thousand heating pads. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. heck yeah! I'd still rock those if I could. Those were my favorite. <laughs> oh, I love them. They're just so they're just so heavy these days. Oh, dude, I know. My pads now, it's like you pick them up and you're like, "This is nothing." And my old pad, I'm like, "Hold on, I got to use two hands to pick these things up." Yeah. <laughs> Yep. They come with 15 straps on each leg. Yeah. Now it's like one Velcro, two Velcro straps, and you're on. Yeah. It's insane. But I also, because I don't play goalie all the time, I do enjoy the less straps due to the fact that my old pads had all the buckles on them. Oh, God. And when you go down in your butterfly, it just puts so much torque on your body. Yeah. That by the time you get done with one game, you're like, yeah, my hips and knees hurt. 100%. That's me. What do you mean? I'm still that way. My knees, I'm still like, ugh. even now I'm like my knees, my back, my hips. I'm like, I'm getting old. Come I on. You could, you could do hot yoga out on the Texas beach. I'm, I, I was out there the other day. I was sweating today. I'm over there working and I'm like doing quotes and I'm like, golly, it's like 90 degrees out here. What is going on? <laughs> Texas is hot, man. It's so hot. I didn't. I mean, I was out here during the winter, and I'm like, it's still nice out here. <laughs> Until it snows or gets into a, a freeze and everything shuts down. It shuts down. Um, dude, shuts down. They were like, I know a little bit north of where I'm at now. They were like, it's gonna snow so much. I go outside and I'm like, the next day I'm like, there's not even. It's like a little dusting. <laughs> Nashville got hit with eight inches. I'm like, yeah. thank the Lord I'm not there right now. Yeah. So how did you – so you you told us how you got called up from Rink Rat. So how did you get called up from Blood and Feathers? How would that go down? <laughs> so my uh, – I mean, obviously, we brought you back into the game. Um, they they yeah. must have been watching some tape, you know. <laughs> they're, they're watching our single A and club. Yeah. <laughs> um, my buddy Mendoza, Justin Mendoza, who plays, he started playing with uh, Blood and Feathers. He called me up. We were playing, we just played, uh, I played with Dolomite and the Cows yeah. out in California. And he was like, hey, I got a team that I'm, I might want you to play with. And he called me up. He's like, hey, you want to come up to this tournament? I was like, yeah, I'll come. And that's been that since. I, me and Ken have like he's like he's the head coach slash owner me and him became great friends we talk every day and uh yeah he's like last year when i was pretty much done because i mean my body is shot he was like give me one more year i need you i need you for one more year i was like fine (laughs) we're pretty good at guilting you guys i'm telling you yeah i mean he's like come on give me one more i'm like all right, Ken, but I can't do every tournament. I can't do every tournament. He's like, all right, deal. <laughs> so, do you ever miss one and then you're like, ah, I actually wish I was there? That's every tournament. <laughs> every tournament I miss. Even the ones that like we're not even going to, I'm like, man, I wish I was at that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you miss it. Even when I wasn't playing, I was still following along. And it's like one of those you're like, man, I, I would love to get out there and play. Oh yeah, but yeah, when your body hates you, your body hates you. You guys have the hardest position for that. Oh, it sucks. Yeah, and it, I probably didn't take good care of it when I was younger. We'll say <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> well, it's uh, you know hindsight's twenty twenty. Yeah, yeah, true. Too Just much. take more calcium pills. You'll be fine. I guess yeah, I probably could have done that with the alcohol. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> yeah washed on a couple of fish oil pills some calcium right? but with a beer 
Well, when you live on, when you live right by Broadway, I mean, you can't, yeah, when you're young true. and you're 20 and 23, four years old. I mean, I, I understand I mean, going there at least once a year for a tournament now. Yep. And my, my, I mean, my go-to is go to one of the honky tonks. Yep. Drink a couple. Drink a ton of beer. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I was going to keep it to a couple, but yeah, you're right. <laughs> Well, for and me, then, last time it was a ton, ton of beer. <laughs> and then, and then you know, because they have the street closed down, I just end up doing as many cartwheels as I can until someone gets in my way. I, I remember that. <laughs> I so remember that. Yeah, but I think I was. You, were we playing together that tournament, or were we against each other? We might have been. Uh, it, I think. I think it was against each other. Was that Echo? Was no, that, that was that was the might be might have been the first nasty. Oh, it was the first Nashi Cup where they canceled the first day because of the storm. Yeah. Yeah. And then I had a 1.30 in the morning game in 28 degrees. Yes. Oh, man. We won that year when I played with the Jets. I was playing with the Jets. We ended up winning it. But, my God, it was the worst. I mean, I had a blast. Don't get me wrong. But it was freezing. Oh, yeah. Freezing. And you're trying to – I wasn't even skating, so I couldn't imagine the players – my face was frozen just standing in the net. So I couldn't imagine like skating into the cold air. It was like, I think it got down to what, like 21 at one yeah. point? Well, and at that 1 30 in the morning game, because they pushed everything back, they still had the fans on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the yeah, big, it was, it was cold. The big ass fans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Those things are huge. Massive. Well, that's the brand now. I think they're called the big ass fans. No, they're not. That's yeah. funny as hell. Yeah, I swear. Yeah, they do put out some air too. I'll tell you that much. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But because they went with the big fans, that's why the roof is so tall. Yeah. No. <laughs> Where were you guys playing before they built that ring? Uh, I didn't play at all okay. in Nashville. Yeah, they have they have one right down the street, but it's outdoors. And then I mean, all of them are outdoors with no roof or anything um there's one in laverne and there is one in i believe uh bellevue and that's concrete so there's not much not many not many choices and i think they sold the one that's outdoor with tile yeah they did yeah, which, last time we saw it, it just had a bunch of hay bales. Hay bales, and dirt all <laughs> hay bales, weeds growing through it. Like that's Nashville. Hey, talk about talk about honky neglect. Tonk. That's honky tonk for you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, now that rink, I played. So when I first started playing roller, like learning, I started ice and then I started some roller. We were playing in Spring Hill, and it was an outdoor rink that General Motors built. And it was like mostly just the people that their parents worked there because my dad worked for General Motors. And so I started playing there and it's concrete. The round, the it's fence, but the fence wasn't clean. It was like sticking out and sharp. Oh yeah. So if you ran into it, like good luck, you're going to have to go get a tetanus shot. But I mean, know about that. It's better than nothing. (laughs) Yeah, we had a uh, we we had to start tying back our because we we put an asphalt painted, and Ooh. then uh, it's a uh, chain link fence all the way around the boards, and uh, we had a guy get cut pretty bad from the chain link fence. So, just but honestly, I think it was because he wasn't wearing elbow pads. So if he was wearing elbow pads, then he probably yeah. would have gotten cut. So it's you know, it is yeah. what it is. His yeah, he didn't have thing. elbow pads or sleeves. Yeah. Cool. So thankfully he's all good cool. and he's better and he's healthy and living his life. Yeah. And I mean that's the thing, right? Like trying to grow roller hockey is it's hard, yeah. but I mean it needs to. That's like Texas right now here. Like there's a program called URH and they're trying to start like kids program and stuff, trying to get it to grow. And I mean it started off he had maybe his name's Drew, but he had maybe 10 kids. And then now Saturdays, he's getting more and more and trying to grow it. 
because I mean, you know, the typical ice hockey player growing yep. up was like rollers terrible for you. Yep. But now it's starting to get better where people are like, I start like I'll look at Bedard and all those guys. I I've been playing roller. So now kids are like, Well, I can play roller. So I mean I, I think that blood and feathers should pick up Bedard. <laughs> Hell yeah. I mean, I'm starting the rumor that he's coming to Wish Cup, so <laughs> Yeah. Well, you you know they're not gonna be in playoffs this year, so he has some time. Yeah, exactly. Like he's got all <laughs> he has the entire tourney se- season to play. Uh-huh. He doesn't need to go to the North Shore inline hockey league in Vancouver. He doesn't need to play there. Just play the tournament series. Agreed. That's what I'm saying. He's got to take if he really back. loves the game. Yeah. yeah. He's got to do it for the love of the game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you can shout out and tell him to come play. Yeah, well, Justin snip this and then we'll send <laughs> it to him. It. We'll tag him and then you know we'll 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 get his ass to Either well, well, I'm trying to get him the wish cup because that'd be the best part about it. That would be awesome. But just to see him play, I mean, if you play in the NSIHL, why not play in just Tours Narch or State Wars? Oh, right? yeah. Just, I mean, anyone would take him. Oh, I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure. I mean, I'll vouch for it. Mama probably has first dibs. <laughs> Listen, it's it's your, it, I'll make it your goodbye present. Perfect. And I'll try and get him on Blood and Feathers. Hey, I, I would. Just tell him we can't we can't afford to pay for him, but we got him. We got it. No, no, no. It's coming out of Ken's Ken's pocket. Ken will pay. Ken will pay. Ken, Ken's got to. If Ken wants if Ken wants us win, he's got to pay for him. <laughs> Let me, if Bedard said he's playing, I'm sure Ken would be like, "Where do I need to? What do I need to do?" Yeah. <laughs> Bedard could pay for himself, but just to get him there, Ken's got to pay for him. I don't know. He's on a rookie contract, right? He's still so. making six six figures. Yeah. True. Well, hey, you know, it's probably expensive where he, he might be living with his parents still. Who knows? Well, that, those, that Canadian tax. Exactly. So, and I mean. He's living in Chicago. He's probably, you know, having a good time downtown. 18 years old. Wouldn't you? Yeah. I mean, you can only do so much, but. <laughs> so much that people know about. Exactly. <laughs> We had a we had a someone talk tell us about how they were in Vegas for All Star Weekend, and he was like, "Yeah, all the rookies downtown Vegas hammered." Oh yeah, I was there for the Chicklets Cup that weekend. That was the same oh, weekend. Sweet. That was unreal. That was probably the most fun tournament I think I've ever played in. Really? That's what everyone well, says. Yeah. Man, it was absolutely a blast. I mean, you're drunk the entire time because it's free Pink Whitney the whole entire nice. time. But I will say, because I played for Narch, the Narch team that had Junior Cadiz, had No, had all those guys. Like we, okay. we won that division. I don't even think it was close on any of the games. And then I also played in the C division with tennis. They got my buddies from Tennessee. Nice. And we ended up winning that division. But I mean, we had a blast. It was unreal. How, how would you describe the level of the C? The C level? Yeah. It going from <laughs> well, going from those guys shooting on you to going down to C, which I mean, everybody knows it's a little bit of a difference. It's, yeah. it's for me, it was a little hard to adjust because I mean, you go to make a save and you're like, oh shit, that was way too early. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, but I mean, once you like are a little tipsy and stuff, you, your reaction time slows down and you just go out and have fun. And I mean, we ended up winning the championship game like two to one and then i got yelled at by everybody on the other team <laughs> because they were watching us win the pro divi- the uh, the the top division and they're like you can't play oh my god i, I thought i was gonna get jumped <laughs> thought i was gonna get jumped but it was fun hell yeah blast. yeah but, i mean as much as i i do love my pink whitney from time to time but that stuff, I can only imagine drinking that all day. All day. How, how much of a hangover that would be? And I you didn't just can't for, stop drinking. I didn't it. sleep for four days, so I don't. I didn't really have much of a hangover. 
Did you go from from drinking and playing to the casinos and back to drinking and playing? Oh, 100%. Nice. I literally was at the casino all night playing blackjack. I don't think I moved from the, the table after we were done. Except I will say, Nijar like hooked us all up with dinner and stuff one night. Nice. He had like a speakeasy for us and stuff. It was awesome. That's sweet. That's cool. Yeah, it was pretty sweet. And then I went back to the casino. <laughs> Have you ever played at Nijar Stadium? Yes, it is unbelievable. And he is probably the nicest person I think I've ever met. Like, so if you have, I mean, I've known him for years now, but like he's unbelievably nice. And I mean, it is probably the sickest <laughs> roller rink I think I've ever been at. I mean, just to have a rink inside your house. Yeah. And then, and then on top of that, to have a trophy room. I uh, it, it just watching because I think the one year they came out with the video of like uh they did a real nice and they just did from the front door in. Yeah. And it, this man, the the way they had the little locker room set up, yeah. it's so awesome. And then you go in and it's I will say this, even in the bathroom, the floors are warm like it's got floor warming. Like the the floors are warm in the bathroom. And he's got bidets in there. Damn. It's unbelievable. If it, I would live in it, <laughs> it's uh, unbelievable. That's sick. But no, I he's he's been unbelievable for the sport just alone. I mean, look what he does with Palma. Yeah, you know what I yeah. mean. Like their family, it's it's great. Like you can't beat that. I mean, that's probably. I'm sure that's been like the backbone for for roller hockey is having Nijar around. Yeah. So. I can, Absolutely. And I mean, that's before I even started playing. So. Yeah. They've been, I mean, yeah, he's, he's been around for a while. Yeah. Yeah. He's awesome. Such a good dude. Now, but, I want to go back to what you said because you said you coached the women's blood and feathers team. Yeah. And last year, they won it all. Well, so <laughs> we, we had a little controversy. Oh. But, yeah. Because we got like we got sent down to the double A, like because they broke off into two, right? Yeah. Like you know how tournaments do, like top four and then the next four. And the only reason why is because of gold. Dif- I think it was like plus minus or something. But we beat everybody pretty bad, except we lost one game to, to the number one seed, which was the rinks the rink rat team. We lost 5-4. And then we got bumped down. And our girls were, they were devastated, right? Like, they're like, we, how are we down in the bottom seed? Like, we destroyed everybody. The team that, like, ended up going above us got mercied in the first, like, in the next division up. And then we ended up, I think we mercied both teams to win it. Like, our girls wow. team is good. Like really good. Like, do do, do they play the same way the men's team plays? Our women's team is very aggressive, which I like it because, yeah. like, you don't see it as much. I mean, I don't know if y'all have watched the women's pro division, but it's really good. Yeah, like yeah. those girls can wheel. Oh yeah, and our girls are physical, which makes cool. which helps them be really good. And we have really good players on our team. And I I think this year they're gonna you'll see, they'll probably they'll probably win a few tournaments again. Okay. So and then my boy Russ, he is actually gonna be coaching a lot too. Um Russ Christopher, he's from Chicago. He's gonna be helping coach. He's he's good. He's he's really good with the with them too. So so we're gonna be seeing you behind the bench, yelling. You're gonna hear me yelling from behind the bench. Nice. Well, at first, because I mean, it sounds terrible, but I didn't know how to like. I've coached women's hockey before. Yeah. So I was like, all right, do I just stay quiet? Do I not? And then the girls were like, "Tell us what we're doing wrong. Like, be stern with us." And I'm like, all right. Hey. 
<laughs> That's what I, I I personally I loved it. So yeah, I mean, I did too. Especially in action of like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh, yeah, I'm doing it wrong. All right, let's get back. Yeah. And they talk more shit to each. <laughs> they talk more shit on the ring than anything, dude. I love it. Nice. I absolutely. I've always love said it. that. Yeah. We have a girl on our team, Ooster. <laughs> She is unreal, dude. She'll she'll shit talk you, then go score, and then just smile at you. <laughs> Hell yeah. She's a trip. Man, she's she is hilarious. All weekend, all the whole weekend at Palma. She's like, what up, coach? I'm gonna I'm gonna score like six goals this game. <laughs> I'm like, all right, all we'll right. see. We'll see. <laughs> hey, well, love- Love to see the confidence. Yeah, oh, she's awesome. I mean, they're all a good group. There's all of them are such a good group, and they get they gel so well together. I think that's what made them so good. Are they from a? Are they most of them from a certain area or? No, nah, so we have like two girls from Canada, or we had four girls from Canada, but like separate parts. Then we yeah. had um, our captains from. She's in Chicago right now, working with the Blackhawks. Um, we have girls from all over, but they just, when they get together, they just gel and it's, it's been awesome. I've had well, fun. It sounds up. like, it sounds like your captains, your hookup to, uh, Bedard. Hey, right. That's it. There I, you go. There, there you go. Blood and feathers saying. first dibs, because guess what? Yeah. Captain of the girls team plays for blood and feathers. Yep. Pam has already got enough guys on their team. They don't need someone else. No, they're so good. They don't need any more. <laughs> they don't need any more. I love playing Pama. That's probably one of my favorite teams to play. I hate playing Black Ice because every time I play them, I always get beat. And I don't, I mean, but still, like, I love playing those teams. It just makes you better. It makes you want to play oh, yeah. better, too. And so, like, playing against Pama, I mean, win or lose, as long as it's close. Every time we've played them, it's been close. Like, I think our worst game against them was four to one. And I mean, that's pretty good yeah. against that squad. And that was in tours like two years ago. And we didn't even take half of our pro team. But it's just one of those like you, you just want to play better. Yeah. That's why, that's why I love the Palm Invitational. It's like you get to play the best teams and you, you want to play better. Well, that's exactly, exactly the reason why I went to USRC and played in the pro division on a throw together team, knowing that the odds were stacked against us. But like having the opportunity to go against like Blood and Feathers and a stacked champion team, it's like you know that that team right there might be a, would probably be a top team in Taurus Pama Narch. Yeah, they, they put Definitely. together right. Yeah. You know, and so you look at that and you go, okay, like how many times am I going to play against that stack of a team? Unless I play pro against Pama or, you know, Black Ice or something like that. Hardly ever for myself. Yeah. I mean, I mean it's good. And you get to see, you get to see the competition, right? Like you see where you stack up. It's like, okay, I can, I can roll with some of these guys or yeah. man, that was a lot faster than I expected. <laughs> well, it's like, you know, I'm, co- I was coming off being like, crazy sick too and so i was like all right this is this is going to be a test on the lungs this is going to be a test on the body and so that's the thing is you know i i was like as long as i can keep stride for stride with them and just you know i just play yeah and like i was like okay you know usually usually i produce some points for my teams but i only you know only a couple assists i was like you know but i can't i can't put aside the effort that i put in you know and you know, and I got uh, Scooter Vaughn to be on the podcast because he high sticked me. So it, it was a win win. It was a win win. You can't beat that. You got to <laughs> take one for the team. Come yeah, on. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> another, uh, high, another high stick. Yeah. You know, like, it's just, yeah. It, it, he looked at me, he goes, I'm so sorry. And I was like, this is why I wear a cage. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like that, I looked at him and said, you owe, me, you owe me a podcast because if I wasn't wearing a cage, I would be missing all my teeth. <laughs> Well, that's like PJ um, DiMartino. Yeah. He, uh, we were at Winter Wars 
East last year and he got pushed into me and I hit my two front teeth on my cage and I chipped the crap out of both my front teeth. And I had to, I, I mean, now I got like fake teeth, but it's whatever. It looks Join better. The club. But... Join the club. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's but, the entire top front row is all right? half fake. So, well, when we were at, we were at nasty last year, he ended up staying at my house for a few days, <laughs> him and his brother. <laughs> I was like, I was like, yeah, this is your fault. He's like, oh, my bad. I'm like, nah, it's all good. <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> but, uh, yeah he's a trip i love oh. dj oh yeah well when we had him on and we 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 chirped him a little bit for passing out at uh was a wish cup oh my on god the bench. on the bench yeah <laughs> that that was the funniest thing i think i've ever seen it was hilarious Definitely. but the best part was is i think wasn't it somebody called his name and he like popped up out of nowhere yeah, and well, you just see him like looking around yeah he we our game was actually playing after his game and he laid on our bench for like almost the first period. Then someone like said his name like right next to him and he like what the hell? <laughs> I'm scared. Stumbled away, got undressed, and then fell asleep on the bleachers. Yeah. Like, okay. I mean, it's Nashville. It's a blast. Yeah. Well, Can't when you when you're not expecting your playoff game to maybe at 8 a.m. I'm telling you. Oh my <laughs> goodness. Are you guys doing Wish Cup this year? Yeah. Uh more yeah, I mean we will be. It'll be fun. Yeah. I want uh, I want another crack at uh, Nasher's team. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'll say it every every time. I, I, he better be there. He is. He will. He'll yeah. be there. The Heat better be there. They probably will. I'm pretty sure because I I'm I think he knows Colby pretty well. Which benefit? I I'll give props to Colby. Colby has grown the Wish Cup oh, yeah. so much. And it's awesome because my son also has cerebral palsy. Mm-hmm. And so, like, it's awesome what he's doing. Yeah, no, it's it's fantastic. He's doing it for a great cause. Yeah. You know, and it's just, just, I mean, the first year, you know, it was what it was. And then he just, he's, every year he's elevated it. Yeah. And it's just been a spectacle, especially, you know, all-star so, game, all-star and, game and building up the pro division and, you know, getting – just a more and more teams every year to come join. I mean, yeah. this is this is essentially a two week tournament. Yeah, yeah, and I'll be there this year. My girlfriend's kids are playing in it. Like, we're super pumped. I love it. I mean, it's my back door too. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, it, <laughs> it it's and that's why it, the only thing I wish would happen is that they could do something with the rink to make sure that the weather, oh. the rain doesn't affect the rink. I know. I wish they would have closed it in when they first yeah. built it, but again, it's the money. It comes down to money. I mean, they didn't want to put the money into yeah closing everything and stuff. You know how it goes. But why didn't you get into the Florida glass business? You could you could have Florida glass the entire each side of it. <laughs> hey, if anybody needs turf, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> So. The, ter- the turf, the turf survives the floor, uh, the uh, Texas heat. That yeah, it does. That's right. So you can you can be my spokesman. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm good at that. I I can I'll, I could talk anyone up. Right. So that's awesome. But yeah, that's that's the only downfall about that rink is the sides. Right. Yeah. When it gets windy, if it rains, like it's hard to do anything because it gets underneath that tile and. You're kind of just stuck at what nature is mercy, pretty much. Yeah. So. And, it's, and it's weird too because the moisture collects in the beams. Oh yeah. And, and then it and then it hits the the I don't know the beam comes down and then it hits a stopping point where they weld it all together and it just drips slowly onto the rink. Yeah. And you're like you clean it up and you come back and it's just the same spots just same drip spot. on. Yeah. Because that happened last year at the end of the tournament, the the championship game. Oh man, mm-hmm. that was yeah. Well, yeah. It, poured poured and hail absolutely yeah the hail was massive it yeah. was like this big yeah yeah and stuff is blowing everywhere it's like someone's tent is gone <laughs> well i think it's in april if you're back home because i know you say you go to uh you go back home every some odd weekends right yeah they're doing the uh bethel 
uh, Grand Canyon University games. Ooh. Uh, I think it's, yeah. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Yeah, they're doing a, a three game set there, I guess, before nationals. That's awesome. So, yeah, it's, that's got to check that out. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe I'll do some scouting. <laughs> yeah, you know. But, you know, it, it, <clears throat> you look at it and you go, you know, just talk a little bit of college hockey here. Can Grand Canyon University take on Lindenwood? Yeah. The, the, beast, the... the beast of college roller. Yeah. My buddy's playing for Lindenwood right now. Bryce. Yeah. Bryce yep. Pierce, you know Bryce. Yep. Yeah, he's playing with them. He's He said like, it's, it's different. It's hard. Yeah. It's fast. And he loves it, though. Yeah, I mean, and it's great because just watching Bryce to him transition, I guess, from what was ice hockey, right? And he got mm-hmm. into roller, and then he went and was able to play for Team USA. Yeah. And so, yeah, he's just made tremendous strides that he has just fit right into the roller community. So, yeah. No, he's awesome. I, he's so fast too. Yeah. I used to, I used to call him Little Men. What is it, Mendoza? The um, from the Mighty Ducks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's so fast, and I'm like, I'm like, golly. He's like, I can stop. I'm like, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> his little, his long legs start moving. He's gone. So let's let's talk the the big, the big topic here. Let's do it. I found it. So I found out through your girlfriend tagging you and making a post this year at the Uh-oh. beginning of the year, saying that you're going into retirement. Yes. This is it. It was supposed to be last year. This is the year. Well, from pro. Okay. From pro. 35 and over and then 40 and over. That's that's my jam now. All right. Well, you, you do know that you go to 35 and over and you're playing car shield, right? I'm 35 now. I can't wait. So you're, you're playing car shield pro team in 35 and over. I uh, know. It's the 35 and over division is literally a minor pro t- like division. Yeah. Like it's just, it's a pro division with like, just not calling it pro pretty much. Yeah, your, your tier one 35 plus is sniper, <laughs> yeah. sniper scar shield. Yeah. It's I love 35 and over. I got to play one tournament so far and I'm like, this is where I want to be. <laughs> I got a taste of 30 and over last year. And I was like, yes. Right. That was me. When I was 30, I was like, man, I can't wait for 35. I cannot wait. Then I hit 33, and I'm like, God, so close. Now I'm 35. I'm like, it's about time, and I love it. <laughs> well, it's crazy too, right? Because it's State Wars only does 35 and up. Yeah. Whereas Tours, and I don't know, I don't know if Narch does 30 or, or 30, just 35, but uh, Tours does 30 plus. Yeah, and that's so, good. That's, yeah. Oh, that's that, that. That was we did. I did Tours Nationals last year, 30 plus, and that was some. Good hockey. Yeah. I played the 30 and over two years ago and the pro. And I was like, I don't think there's a difference. I feel like every guy that's in the 30 and over is playing in the pro division. I'm like, yeah. I was like, this is taught. This is hard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't sign up for this speed on when I did 30 and over. Yeah. It was, it was insane. Like, it was so much fun. It, I mean, we also went in as a single A team. And, uh, you know, and this thing is like, you know, it, yes, it's lower talent in single A, but single A in at, at least just talking tours is the frigging gauntlet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's like Palma. How many teams or how many teams do they yeah. have at State Wars? Oh, it's true, too. Yeah, they have a ton as well. It's yeah, like you, 60, 70 teams sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And then you, yeah. It's insane. And then, you know, you know, there's some of them are sandbagging. Yeah. Because you watch some of those. You're like, they're that's not a. <laughs> that's not yeah. it wait that guy played platinum last year <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah you see that all the time like i played i played single a a few years ago like or not a few years ago it was a little bit ago but i played single a with curtis oh, sour God. like we had a squad we ended up still losing but like we had a squad because i mean people were sandbagging and then yeah. sour and curtis would get off and they'd throw their best line out there because we had we literally had one line that was like top tier like quality players and then we had real single a players yeah 
and then you're playing these like teams that are sandbagging and they put their best players against your like actual single a players and it's like oh boy here we go (laughs) yeah but we made it to like the i think we made it to the quarters or semis and then we ended up losing by one (laughs) but yeah the the lower division because there's more teams it's just the gauntlet Oh yeah, it, it, you you play so much hockey and like you can con- continue to win. It's worth like you pretty much are getting extra playing time at that point. Oh, you play like eight games or something. It's yeah. it's insane how many games you get to play because of all the teams. Yeah, well, it's like I think Tours had thirty eight teams yeah. last year, and so they, and they took top twenty, and then you did a play in stage, and then you play, and you just top sixteen, and then, yeah, so it just. I think we made it into because we ended up being a play in stage and then we ended up going winning that game, playing Sweet 16. I then I th- we either won or lost in the, in the in the eight, the, the round of eight. And so it was just like, you're like, holy crap, my body <laughs> hurts. hurts. Yeah. Yeah. That's me after Palma. Every Palma invitation I've gone to, I'm just like, I just want to lay down. I don't want to move for a week. And now, like, even every tournament I go to, I'm like, I get home, my girlfriend's like, you okay? I'm like, I can't move off the couch. <laughs> just let me sit here for, like, two days. <laughs> like, just let me let me cry myself to sleep. Listen, I'm still, I, I just want the call up. I don't care if I don't get a shift. Call me up to pro. I'll get mic'd up. And all I'll do is just chirp the shit out of the other team in warm-ups. <laughs> And from the bench, people walk by, like skate by, and I'll just chirp them, and it'll be mic'd up, and we'll just it'll just be content. And this way, you know, and then it'd be even better if you know someone chirps back, like, "Dude, you haven't touched the rink," and then I'd be like, "Yeah, you're right, I haven't." (laughs) So, and I'm still here. (laughs) You might be able to hook it up, Dan. We got Kenny in the chat right now. He's making me laugh my ass off. Oh, is he? Uh He's he said. Nick, if you can give him one year, you can definitely give him two. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He's also telling you to stay out of Chinatown in New York. Oh, God. <laughs> I knew it. I knew he'd say something. And apparently, now, apparently you have spa visits as well. <laughs> I love it. I'm just getting, I'm just getting called out. <laughs> Damn. So, all right. If Ken's going to call me out, I'm calling him out. So we were at Winter Wars East and we're in New York. We went, we left Pennsylvania. So me and Ken are flying out the next morning. We're in Chinatown. I mean, when I say Chinatown, nobody spoke. I don't, I don't think they even spoke real English. Like we were in the middle of Chinatown and we're trying to find, we first, we go get some dumplings to eat. Nice. And then we're like, we got to find a bar. Like, let's go find a bar. We, I don't even know how we ended up at this place, but we literally had to like knock on the door. Like this thing slides open and they have to like, like punch you in, like unlock the doors and you go into this bar. We get in there and it's like an Asian karaoke bar. Nice. All right. We get there at like 11, 1030 or so. Our flight, we have to be at the airport at 6 a.m. We leave the bar. Ken's hammered. I mean, he's got his sunglasses on in the airport. He's hammered, hammered. Like, we didn't go to sleep. We actually leave the bar, and the the shuttle's leaving the hotel at 4.30. We run. We had to run from this bar probably six blocks, if not more, to our hotel to get our gear and run to like the shuttle to make it to the airport. No shower, no nothing. Like we're hammered out of our mind. Our bar tab, somehow Ken talked the the owner of the bar to where our bar tab was like 40 bucks, which it should have been like 600, if not more. Cause Ken, Ken was doing Ken things, you know, he's talking his way in this stuff. <laughs> and so we end up literally paying nothing for this right like i mean we paid 40 dollars for this whole night and we are struggling (laughs) we're at the airport ken does not take his glasses off 
and I'm we're both like our <laughs> it's hilarious because we're literally our gates are right across from each other. So we get to the airport and it's like six o'clock, five thirty in the morning, and Ken's like, Can I get a beer? And the guy goes, We don't start serving till ten. <laughs> <laughs> and, he's, and then I look over and he's dead. I, he passed out in his <laughs> chair. Apparently, Ken's saying that uh, you didn't read the fine print of your contract. <laughs> you, you, he owned your ass for another five years. There's no 35s for you. <laughs> There's no 35s. 40 and over. Straight to 40 mm. and over. Which I can't wait for that either. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently, I'm getting a rookie lap. A rookie lap. I could see that. He would let that happen. <laughs> Did you hit any uh, karaoke at that bar? No, because it was only Chinese only. Like, no English karaoke at all. It was all Chinese. Like, we didn't know anything going on there. No clue. They And the the owner spoke broken English. So, like, we're trying to, like, communicate with everybody in there it was it was rough Apparently but it was you a great find your wallet what's that you couldn't find your wallet no lost my wallet man it was rough it was rough there's some dude masquerading around as nick wydock right now <laughs> <laughs> good luck <laughs> yeah you can hey, have it. you know what Ken can do? Ken can just give me Whitey's jersey and I'll sit on the bench wearing it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and I'll skate backwards and fall just to keep on track with what Whitey did. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, man. That's awesome. I love it. Ken, Ken's going to love that. <laughs> so Ken's a trip, though. I love Ken. Seriously. Maybe we can get Ken on here one time. Yeah. You have to. You might laugh more than you do anything. Probably. <laughs> or he'll I'm talk the it. entire time like I do. Hey, that's fine. That's why <laughs> you guys are here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it makes our job easier. <laughs> yeah. Now, our whole coaching, we got Joe, Santo. All those guys are awesome. They're all a good group. They do. They do everything they can for us when it comes to setting up hotels, all of it. So I'll give I'll give Ken credit where it's due. And and he's good at paying bills. A hundred percent. That man's on time with everything. <laughs> Even the beer tab. <laughs> yeah. Hundred percent. I just wish there was a karaoke story. I was gonna ask you what song you would you sang and I mean if it was exactly. up to me, I mean little Celine Dion would have been that's what I would have hit up. Okay. All right. My heart would go on. A hundred percent. I mean, what? Hell so, yes. what song would you say that Ken would have sang? It's raining men, probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, a little bit, a little bit of that. You know, that's you know, that's why he enjoys the locker room so much. <laughs> He's a shower guy. He's a shower guy. Oh, hey, he really? Coach, he, are you, he, you coaching? I didn't play, but I coached. I'm, I'm in. <laughs> Dude, he's, a, he's, a, awesome. he's the he's the greatest coach he just suds everyone's back up <laughs> yeah. exactly i brought the shampoo and soap i'm here i did my job that's support yeah <laughs> right i mean you gotta have one you gotta have that guy yeah you gotta have a good shower guy you got to and that's that's definitely ken <laughs> <laughs> oh he said you're benched yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> he said you're benched. <laughs> oh, I'll sit. Oh, I'll sit out all the Winter Wars East. How's that? I can't make it there anyway, so <laughs> that's my bench. <laughs> uh, I awesome. think. I think. Oh, he says you're you're gonna you're the new backwashing guy. <laughs> <laughs> he just wants me to wash his. I get it. You know, I mean, if he's washing he everyone's back, back, someone's someone's got to wash his back. Exactly. I know. I know. That's what Santo and Joe are for. 
I think after this after this uh, interview, you'll probably extend your your fine print. He probably the, even the finer finer print's gonna say like, now he owns your ass for ten years. Oh, 100 percent. No, you're gonna wait till forty five. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When I have no knees, yeah. <laughs> no back. He's gonna have to wheel me out there in a wheelchair and just sit me in front of the net. Yeah, you just you get into if you've ever seen that video of uh, the the computer chair with the goalie sitting in it. Yes, that's that'll be me. <laughs> or just sitting, just pad stack, <laughs> just pad stack everybody. You pad stack, Which, and you oh, just no. pad stack, and you go into the windmill over top of your head to the other side, and you just keep oh, flopping back and forth. That's my that's my normal. That's I love old school saves. That's how I play now. <laughs> I mean, I do love going into the poke check to the pad stack. So, oh, absolutely, <laughs> just a little roller hockey, Dominic Hasek. Right. I don't know if uh, the first year we played Pama, we were playing Skittles. We ended up going into a shootout, but literally it was like towards the end of the game. And this, I don't know who it was, but they caught a pass with their back towards me, and I skate out and I just two pad stack them, and they go flying over me. Nice. Flying over me. I was like, whoop. <laughs> I mean, I took him out. I felt terrible after the game after the game, not during the game. I didn't feel bad during the game. <laughs> but after the game, I felt bad. I was like, I got I hope I didn't hurt him. <laughs> hey, he's yeah. got it. You should have said you're looking the wrong way, bud. Nice. Hey, head on a swivel. Yeah. Head on mm-hmm. a swivel. Apparently your next contract is gonna be sled roller hockey at forty five. Hey. Oh no! Yeah, right. Those guys will snipe me. Have you ever watched <laughs> those guys play? Yeah, they rip, <laughs> rip. I couldn't keep up with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take up a different sport. We'll say that curling. I'm gonna take up curling. Okay. All right. I've heard curling is really fun. I know they have one in and Nashville. Lo- yeah, and losing is actually better because the winners have to buy you beer. No, oh, then if it was up to well, Ken, if me and Ken are on a team, we'll lose every game. <laughs> <laughs> M- MGM is going to be like, this, we can't, we can't put these guys on the. Uh, you can't bet on these guys; they always lose. They always lose. Mm-hmm. They, they're losing on purpose. Yeah. All right, <laughs> they're lo- they're losing on purpose. The guy just threw it into the other ring. <laughs> they do have. So I don't know if you've seen talking about curling. They do have the dry land curling now too dry land curling so like it's the roller um, the roll it's got like a roller curling so like when you roll it it's just a, a ball underneath the curling so right. maybe, i guess i don't maybe think start they there the sweepers, though. yeah and there's yeah. no sweepers but you can oh that's telling, the best part who, who's telling exactly. you can't bring a broom though i mean <laughs> <laughs> that's the best part is sweeping you get to yell sweep i think that's what everybody knows curling just mm-hmm. yell sweep at everything Oh, Even I when love you're not the supposed intensity to. of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you look at, uh, what was it? Was it Team USA's team that was just like your typical drinking dad's like looking team? Like <laughs> dad bods going yeah. out there. Heck yeah. It's like golf. You got the guys mm-hmm. with the guts hanging over the belt. That's more my sport. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Kenny, Kenny says you're goalie too on a sled hockey team. Yeah, no. Those guys, I would end up hurt those be like yeah i couldn't do it i've watched those guys play man i don't understand and i give them a hundred percent credit because i would end up tipped over and struggling the entire game have you ever tried it no it i mean it's hard upper the upper body strength i mean i'm sure i could do it but at, at 33 no thank you no i mean i can barely lift a pencil there's no way i can push my fat ass around the rink in a sled <laughs> so why it's why you give quotes to the touchpad right exactly <laughs> exactly that's like me and my girl went to uh uh sam's and literally i sat and you know the the chair that tells you your blood pressure the yeah. damn thing said I oh, was yeah. fat. It, it said yeah. I was fat. It said oh, I was overweight. I sit there and it tells me I'm Literally. obese. Yeah. 
it I'm literally like, is like yeah. you are a fat ass get yep. off get off me yeah it, it has a certain weight that at your height yeah. and and your age that you should be at and if you don't hit it it just tells you you're obese yeah i was like oh okay thanks i mean like, my i was shook is what young kids would say <laughs> i literally looked at her and i was like am i that fat like crying almost <laughs> some of those standards don't make any sense though if you're five ten, they want you to be like one thirty five, I think. Yeah, it's stupid. Yeah, stupid. It's I'm like, not, I'm, wait, I'm not like supposed to, to have any muscle. Yeah, I like to eat. That's my yeah. problem. Absolutely. <laughs> Put a pizza in front of me, and I'm. It's done. Don't tease me. <laughs> yep. Right. It's my chat, love language. Chat says confirm. Robot seed said you're huge. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, so uh, I mean, we, you kind of touched up on it, but like, I mean, what is for your last hurrah? What's the expectations for this year? So for this year, my goal is to help get blood and feathers into playoffs at Pama. Okay. That is my ultimate goal so that they can have, they don't have to worry about playing in, you know, like I want, that to be it and then i'm pretty sure joy is going to be our goalie for the blood and feathers future so if i can teach him as much as i can then that's that's my goal this year to help them get into playoffs at pama and teach as much as i can because i mean he's he doesn't need much he's a good goalie he doesn't need much but whatever knowledge i can throw at him that's that's my goal. You know, you know what you got to do, right? You're on your contract for the five years for blood and feathers. You don't suit up, but you sit behind the net and you yell at him. <laughs> I, yeah, I could definitely do that. You that's should have been more square on that shot, Joy. Square, square up, damn it. <laughs> Stay up. Yeah. <laughs> like the, the parent, the angry parent in the stands. Yeah. Yelling at their kid. Oh God, Kenny! Kenny's putting a huge. He says three championships this season, or don't come home. <laughs> that's my. That's because my girlfriend will disown me. <laughs> <laughs> every time she's like, every time I, she's like, "How'd you play?" I'm like, "Yeah." She's like, "Then why are you here?" <laughs> Damn. No, she's awesome. Honestly, if it. If it wasn't, she also has been like my biggest support this year, so that helps. I don't even. Is it Shannon? Go. Yes. Oh boy, she's funny, dude. She, she's a trip, right? She just. I don't even want to know. <laughs> you might have another season underneath your belt. What'd she say? Uh, you'll play another season if all travel costs are paid for, and he's guaranteed <laughs> one pepperoni pizza after every game. <laughs> She's my agent. It's a good deal. She's my agent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, she's a trip. She honestly, if it wasn't for her, I probably wouldn't play as much as I do even now. So she yeah, encourages great to me. Have that. Yeah. And Kenny's Kenny. So we have negotiations going on in the chat. <laughs> Kenny says cheese pizza only and a Greyhound bus ticket. <laughs> Uh, get, get him the pepperonis. I mean, if I'm on a bus, you better give me some fucking pepperoni. <laughs> it probably it'll probably get downsized to hot pocket. Hot pocket. <laughs> and I gotta <laughs> find the microwave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sounds about right. No, she's awesome. She gets along with everybody too, so that helps. She gets along with everybody on our team. So she talks more shit than anybody. I love it. Oh man, this is you're now at a half a pepperoni and an economy on American Airlines. <laughs> <laughs> Still gotta pay for bags. Yeah, you gotta pay for the bags. Still gotta pay for bags. It's fifty dollars. So now now you gotta tape your stick, your goalie pads, see, see, and your bag is, together. Now you see what Ken thinks of me. Now you see what Ken thinks of me. <laughs> hey, I, I think he's a pretty nice guy. He's giving me a, a rookie lap. Hey, that's more than what I get. 
I get a, what the fuck are you doing out there? <laughs> and then I look at him and I'm like, I don't, I don't even know what I'm doing out here. <laughs> Just winging it. Just winging Just, it. Hey, I, I'm old man trying to be a young, young, playing a young man's sport now. That's the problem. Every time, every tournament I play and I feel like everybody gets younger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everybody's younger and I just keep getting old. All right. You want to hear the final, the final contract negotiations by Kenny? Oh. Half his leftover ham sandwich from lunch today and a one way flight of, on Spirit Airlines. <laughs> oh, I, I quit now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm retired right now. <laughs> and more than likely, I, he's scraping off chance. all the. He's scraping off all the mayo too off his sandwich. I call it that. Now. I believe so. It's just like thievery, nasty. He's like, oh. I'm not giving that man any extra. <laughs> oh no. man, so good. I love it. Those two. I just I love the negotiations in the chat. It's been great. <laughs> yeah. It's funny though because. Every time someone calls for me to play, I'm like, here, hold on. And I hand it to her. And I, <laughs> and I just let her talk. She's like, what are we talking here? What, what, is, what are we talking? <laughs> She's a trip. I might just have to call it just to, just to get into negotiations. Oh, man. She talks more shit than anybody. I love it. Even to me. <laughs> Oh, she'll man. humble. She'll she'll make you feel small real quick. <laughs> uh, She's hi. like, "Who are you? What are you? What do you want?" <laughs> oh, she's awesome. She actually has a podcast as well out here in Texas. Okay, it's called What a Hockey. Okay, it's all it talks all about Texas hockey and stuff. Love it. Yeah. Are, are you uh, get it, Are you playing Texas hockey right now, or are you, are you getting into it? Or yeah, so I've been playing a lot of ice out here, and then I actually started playing roller out here too. They're a they're trefties in it. Okay, like it's the A league out here. It's awesome. It's actually really good. Well, you should know that trefties not going to pass it if you're playing against them. No, absolutely not. The, the best part is is the, every time <laughs> I played over thirties with trefty and whitey. And you didn't see the puck once. No, no, so the no, the best part is, is I wasn't. They, those two lined together, right? Yeah. And before we even started, he's like, he's not going to pass me the puck. And I'm like, well, then why are you on his line? Oh, he, you know, it's just I ought to be on his line. Okay, then. And he's like, you know, White Trefty goes, looks at Whitey, pulls it back, goes to his backhand, and then tries to go bar down, right? And Whitey goes. What the fuck, Trefty? You looked me off. I was wide open. Yeah. And Trefty's all tournaments. All tournament. I love Trefty. He cracks me up. And then we lost in the sem- we lost in the semifinals, which we should have won. <laughs> but Trefty got boarded, got concussed. Yeah. Yeah. So then and then another guy on our team, I don't remember who it was, didn't show up for playoffs. Yeah. So now we're down two guys early. We're down two guys. And I'm like. I'm, I look at him. I go, guys. I shouldn't be leading this team in goals. <laughs> I'm like, uh, for some reason, I am. I don't yeah. know why, but I shouldn't be. Oh, did Whitey tell you the time I, I thought he was gonna get killed by his wife? Isn't that every time he goes to a hockey tournament? Well, this one especially though. I think it was last Wish Cup, maybe. No, it was. Was it Nasty Cup, maybe? His wife broke her, <laughs> broke her toe, and Whitey, she's like, I need you to come home. He's like, but I got a few more games. He stayed till like 1 a.m., and I was playing on his team, and I was like, Whitey, you're, you're done. <laughs> you're done for. <laughs> like, you better run. <laughs> like, don't even go home. Go straight to the airport get a ticket and leave because you're not getting in your house (laughs) anyways we get a text the next morning yeah i'm not gonna be able to make it (laughs) sorry guys i think i gotta stay home with the wife today (laughs) 
Uh, yeah, I was dying. We all oh knew it too. God. We were like, "There's no way he's coming tomorrow. No way is he coming tomorrow." She was at the hospital with the two kids, and Whitey was like, "He's like, like she, she breaks, breaks her toe, toe all the time. time. It's, it's okay." okay. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh man, man. I was like, I love you, Whitey, but you're gonna die. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no. That's, that's... He's funny, man. He's, he's man. too he's funny. Too funny. He's too funny. I know, I know. But, but yeah, yeah. I'm surprised. I'm surprised at USRC. He just didn't look at you guys and say, "Are you guys not entertained?" He pretty much did. He, he pretty much did without. He saying pretty much that. did. I was gonna say he pretty much did. <laughs> it's so good because he turned around. He was like, yeah. Uh, he, he just kept chirping the same like. Like, do you guys want me to play for you now or something like that? Yeah, that's the yeah. I kept saying that. You gonna let me play for you now? <laughs> yeah. Oh, but hey, I mean, it is what it is. They they won. Yeah, they beat us. It's fair and square. You can talk shit all you want. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I always say. Hey, if you back it up, <laughs> you know, it, it's just it was it was a, it was a good tournament for Whitey because uh, you know sometimes yeah. you don't sometimes you don't score. Yeah, I know. Oh. Man, and he hates himself when he doesn't oh, yeah. score. Man, we're gonna yeah. have to let him on now. You have we, to. We have to. Yeah. Yeah. We to. we uh we played. We got hooked up with Champion Hockey, and he like was headed it, and we went to like a I think it might have been like an Echo tournament, and played with like the Champion jerseys, and we got, you know, we they were like, hey, sample our wheels, like yeah, sure, no problem, and so he's like, oh, I got a matching helmet. It's my Toronto Maple Leafs bucket. He goes, everyone's going to think I play for the Maple Leafs. I'm like, you can think that. All right, it's fine. <laughs> he, that man has more stuff and more toys than anybody I've ever met. At his house, he's got a ring in his house. Oh, he's got a ring in his basement, yep. Yeah. It's synthetic ice. Yeah, it's sick. It's unreal. That's awesome. Yeah. And if you <laughs> you name it, he'll make it. he'll make a jersey for it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's – I think – since I've known Whitey, he's probably gone through like four or five different teams. Yeah. He's like, ah, I'm done with this name. Time to make a new one. Yep. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> cool though. Yeah. I mean, he's the, he's honestly like for men's league, he's the best like captain, like person manager to have. Like, cause he takes care of everything. He's yeah. like, he's like, I'll, I'll organize. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, it's the truth, man. It's too funny. Yeah. yeah, me, I'm over here like I don't want any part of it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to organize a damn thing. <laughs> oh man, this chat is too funny, man. Oh god, Ken said he'd rather give a contract to the ham sandwich than Whitey. <laughs> oh no. And then and then Shannon said that this ham sandwich is still chirp chirp him from the bench more unapologetically uh those two go at it all the time it's fantastic yeah they talk more than i think they talk more than i do with ken half the time uh they talk shit to each other mostly about me and they just talk shit about you it's great yeah that's that's pretty much it solid Uh, friendship yeah absolutely yeah so, Justin, you want to hit him with uh, some rapid fire? Uh-oh. Yeah, let's you do it. Hit him with some good ones. Okay. Off the off the cuff. Uh oh. Straight off the cuff. You mean throw some in All there right. and then throw some off the cuff? We'll start easy. <laughs> let's hear it. All right. Favorite pregame meal? Pizza. I kind of pre pregame meal pizza, post game meal pizza. One hundred percent. It's got to have pepperonis. Apparently, I'm struggling, but that's my favorite. Um, can you eat before games, or do you kind of keep yourself? I used to, not anymore. The old age kicked in, and now I'm like struggling if I eat before game. The heartburn from the pepperoni is real. I'm telling you. Uh, what do you think your favorite rink you've ever played at is? Huntington Beach. Okay, what was it about that rink? I don't the atmosphere. I don't know. It was indoors. Just 
I was always there. I loved it. Yeah, cool. I don't know why. I just love that ring. Uh, do you have a favorite chirp? Um, I'm not good at chirping at all. He's just good at yelling. I'm good at yelling. At so people, just telling but... them how bad they are? Yeah, pretty much. That's fair. Yeah. Usually uh, it's somebody will be like, why didn't you say that? I'd be like, why don't, why do you suck? I mean, that's, that's my go. That's my go-to. Play better defense. Uh, who, who is your favorite goalie growing up? Like who is your role model? Mark andre Fleury. Very cool. Even though he's not like old, that's still my, he was absolute favorite. So why don't you I kiss the it. post? Um, I don't know. I I used to like rub them when I was younger, and then now I just realize I'm not good. So I'm just like, eh. <laughs> you need the you need the uh, European post on the North American nets, right? Well, I'm short, right? So for me, I don't have to like bend over. I could just lean in. <laughs> I could just lean. <laughs> All the tall, tall goalies got to bend over and kiss it. I'm just like right there at it. <laughs> um, little left turn here. What is the best part about being a dad? Um, watching them grow up and tell me that I'm not smart. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> and I feel like you like a little bit of punishment. Well, oh, my three-year-old makes me look like an idiot. I can't. I'm terrible with technology. She's over here like, here it is, Dad. I'm like, oh, okay, my bad. Well, and <laughs> if if she's hanging out with your girlfriend, it seems like you're, you're in trouble. Oh, I'm going to be. It's <laughs> it's going to be game over when she gets older. Well, you, obvi- you obviously are a little sadistic to become a goalie. Yeah, like you must, person. you must like. I'm not all there. Punishment. I'm not all there. Actually, um, I'll be, I'll be honest. What do you think the smartest. most important trait? Oh, sorry. No, you're good. Uh, what do you think the most important trait for a goaltender is? Short-term memory. <laughs> Forget <laughs> you just got scored on. Yeah, pretty much. I think that's the biggest trait. I mean, all right. For I mean, the worst part is, is like. I can remember every goal scored on me in a tournament, but when I'm in a game, I don't even think about it. Like if That's I cool. get scored on, it's like, oh well, all I got to worry about is the next save. So I like that. I'll get mad at myself for like two seconds, and then I'm like, all right, next save. Hell so. yeah. Um, who do you think the best shooter in pro is right now? Oh. The scariest person coming down on me, I would have to say, is either Travis No or Eton. Okay. What yeah. is it about them? Well, Travis can just rip the fucking puck like no other. And he's got nasty hands. And Eton, for as small as he is, that man can shoot. <laughs> like, we used to sit and practice, and I mean... I would be like, all right, I'm going to work on reaction time. Well, wasn't much reaction. It was in the net before I would even move. I'm like, God dang, how does he shoot so fast? (laughs) And, I mean, you've seen his videos before. Like, that man, he's got got moves too. Yeah. So, those two, those two for sure are the top, top two people that I hate coming down, especially on a breakaway. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Um, Do you want to give – Three quick tips to young tendies. Yeah. Enjoy the game. Don't get mad at yourself, especially if you're first learning how to play. I feel like when you're getting scored on seven goals, eight goals a game, it's easy to give up. So one of those is don't give up. It gets better as you get older, especially when you play on better teams. (laughs) Also stretch. God, please stretch. You so you don't, don't end be, up you don't you don't want to end up like Nikki. You don't want to be like me now where I'm like, oh my God, when my dad used to tell me when I'd see him stretching in the living room and I'm like, what are you doing? And now I'm like, 
yeah, it makes sense. It makes absolute <laughs> sense. And then pretty much just have fun. I mean, if you don't, then you take it. Sometimes you take it too serious. You don't, you don't fall in love with the game as much anymore. I found that out the yeah. hard way. I felt, I felt out of love playing goalie. And yeah, it, I got, once I learned that it's for fun, I enjoyed it. So I got one, Justin. That's beautiful. Hit him. If there was one thing you could change about roller hockey, what would it be? One thing I could change about roller hockey? Oh, man. That's a tough one. All right. Um, probably three on three. Ooh. So you smaller, get sni- so you get snipe smaller. More, you get snipe more by Travis No. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit smaller rink, three on three. Okay. I think it'd be awesome. I bet we can hook that up for you. <laughs> I mean, it's already fast. It'll it would just make it even more faster. We'll yeah. do. Uh, we'll we'll talk with Tors Narch and uh, Pama, and we'll say, all right, Nikki Whitehawk wants half rank three on three. <laughs> uh, and we'll we'll just set up a whole division for yeah. it. They shoot from half. It goes in. <laughs> Can't see it anyways. <laughs> Well, I only have one more question unless you have something for him, Dan. Um, nope. Nick, did you have fun? Oh, I had a blast. Thank you guys for having me on. Yeah. Hell I yeah, man. We it. loved it. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure I'll be seeing you guys around soon. Absolutely. And you know what? Uh, extend the invite to the podcast for anyone on Blood and Feathers, especially the women's side. You know, we'd, yeah. love, to, we'd yeah. love to tap into – uh you know women's roller hockey it's kind of where we ex- we envisioned ourselves doing in from the beginning yeah especially you know just trying to grow the sport so awesome yeah no i definitely will i'll i'll talk to ken and our women's team and see who wants to join appreciate, appreciate it you. oh yeah anything to help grow the game absolutely love it so hell yeah i appreciate y'all having me on yeah blood and feathers baby Oh yeah. <laughs> Had to well, if you're watching and you haven't clicked the subscribe button, click it down below. If if you if you want to leave a comment like Kenny and Shannon, we love reading them. Uh like the video. Uh and if you're for checking and roller hockey, doll it up because there's no offsides. I'm Dan Dean. I'm Justin Wood. Nikki, thanks for joining us, man. We loved it. Always. Thank you. Yep. See, See you y'all. later, man. Later. No offside. Every episode of No Offsides Podcast is brought to you by Champion Hockey. Be a champion.